So you, you know how monopoly works. Um, at, in the end of the game, there's only supposed to be one, you know, sort of godlike character owning everything, and nobody else gets to exist anymore. Okay, so I'm, I'm pointing out macro scale issues, the challenges that we have, but I also want to celebrate the fact that human beings rock. We are awesome. And in spite of some crazy people trying to control everybody else, we will do all kinds of things. You know, every single thing that we do that is somehow uplifting and supportive of each other, even when we speak words, we're being villagers. And that is the great hope. You know, people can look across Los Angeles and be like, oh my God, so many people, what are we going to do? It's like, you can also say, whoa, look at all this help, you know? <laughs> is the glass half full or, or half empty? Um, okay, so lately, in the last few decades, I mean, you know, we were sold the automobile culture. I mean, it was enforced through all of these top-down decisions. You know, the Interstate Highway Act, along with the National Land Ordinance, of course, all about sort of planning how things would change. Um, funding structures to fund sprawl as opposed to reinvesting in the inner city. So we were romanced and we thought, yeah, I'm modern. I got a car. I'm in the suburbs. I'll drive to work. You know, and they, we would sit there and wait for the light to change so far ahead we couldn't even see it. And we would surge from the home zone to the work zone along with everyone else. And at the end of the day, after a while, you're getting pretty tired. A couple, about a decade and a half later, we're like, God, my relationships are falling apart. You know, I got to have more time with my family and my kids. The more this sprawl happens, the farther and farther everything gets away. Like, who, 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 who laid this place out? You know, and then we get to a point where we're saying, I can't sustain this economically anymore. Like, it's costing too much. And then more lately, people are going, wait a second. I am just trying to feed my family here. And now I find that just by going to work, I'm hurting the world. Like, the oceans are rising and the temperatures are rising. Who laid the, this world out? You know, and of course it was the federal government and oil and cars and uh, banking, making decisions about a model. And it wasn't just about growing the economy to be the dominant world player, although that was one of the aspects of it. Herbert Hoover, who was laying some of the groundwork for all of this, um, fully intended to engender isolation between people um, in order to encourage them to consume. You can look at some of the work of Jonathan Rowe with the Tamales Bay Institute to find out more about that. Okay, so here's a metaphor. Um, the Revolt of the Ponds. And uh, we're going to look, th look at this today because um, this is sort of a, an example of what it is that we have been doing. I'm not going to say to you today, come on everybody, it's time, the time has come. You know, and then we all rush out the doors and do stuff. No, the fact is that we are already at work and transformation is happening very swiftly. I, I mean, obviously it needs to accelerate, but we have been doing incredible things. And not just since the social revolution of the 60s and 70s, but this is an, an illustration of that particular time. Now this is how I play chess. If you really like to play it the old way, then don't play with me. Because I like to presume or assume that people can think differently and get out of their boxes. All right, so you know how chess works. You dump the, the players out, and of course you put the light ones over here and the dark ones over here. Obviously they have enough differences to be on opposite sides. Um, and they're gonna be playing war today on the grid. So, you know, you play that game and then the next day you set it up again and you play it again and then, then the next day you do it again. Apparently the same, same set of rules over and over again. I like to say that during the night in between games, a couple of the community organizers that are in here among the pawns actually get together and meet in the middle and start to trade stories. And they're saying things like, okay, nice to meet you. Wow, yesterday, do you remember what happened? Like, we attacked you and we didn't even know your name. And they're like, the other one's like, yeah, totally, we came out and attacked you guys. The tall ones, the tall oppressive ones with funny hats behind us keep like telling us what to do. And then like, we all die and then they attack each other and they all die. And then the kings live every time. So obviously, you know, it tells you whose game it is. You know, this game is designed to end. All right, so the, they go back, you know, they tr actually trade sides and they start talking to the other pawns. And they're like, hey, you guys, remember what happened yesterday? And the other pawns, because they've never been helped to even know their own story, they you know, have any memory of it. They're like, what are you talking about yesterday? What's, what's yesterday? What do you mean by that? Like yesterday, remember we keep attacking the people over there and then we all die. You know, it's, it's up to us if this game is gonna continue. And the other ones are like, what are you talking about? We're pawns, we just stay in our boxes. We do what we to we're told. So fortunately, they managed to get into small groups with facilitators. <laughs> and they're sitting there telling stories and learning how to talk and learning how to listen to each other and they're all surprised and everything. 
And um, they're crying, hugging each other, like, oh my god, my life, my childhood, it was so horrible. And then they go to the back row to confront their oppressors, and who are totally in, you know, in denial, they're all defensive, you know, who, us, what, we never took more than our share, we didn't do anything wrong. Okay. <laughs> this is what we do every single time. We're all pissed off, and we shove the other guys off the board, and then we turn around, and we look at those guys. And then we play out the same patterns again. So what we have been doing and what we are doing now, even if not everybody realizes it, is getting out of our boxes. You know, you hear each other. We hear each other. We're like, let's go down to the public square without realizing we live in squares. Everybody's talking about getting out of the box without realizing that we fundamentally do live in boxes. So we're getting to be aware of this now. So the first thing that's going on here is the community organizers are like, okay, everybody, get out of your boxes, try out a different shape, okay, no hitting, no hitting, stop hitting, this game does not have to end, come on, you guys. And then somebody says, okay, I really do have way more than my share I can share. And somebody says, all right, I've got a bunch of really great ideas. And then somebody else says, I've got, uh, I've got a lot of time in my hands. And then together they start trying out some ideas. All right, so in Portland, Oregon, this took the form of change in the physical environment um, in a way that would actually reflect who we had become um, up to that time. And not just in Portland, Oregon. It was happening uh, all, over, all over the place where people were be beginning to be affected by the urge of the time to, um, to speak, to test what democracy and free speech would actually mean. So what we did in Portland was we said to the Department of Transportation, sorry, but we're moving the freeway. We're going to create a mile-long people's park. And they're like, ha, 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 no, you're not. We're like, actually, yes. And then we just moved it um, and created this fabulous, spectacular place. And we became famous across the country for defying our State Department of Transportation and creating a people's place. We didn't even think about it, though. We went downtown and we said, what in the world is going on here? 150 years this city has existed, and we don't even have one single public square. So this sort of tension. Um, developed between different interests, but still this partnership culture that had emerged from the struggle for the waterfront um, carried, carried forward. There was, still, there was still kind of a question, will that, will that two-story parking garage here in the center of town become a public square or not? Finally, the mayor broke the dam by saying, you know, that's not going to happen because if it did, it would facilitate a revolution. And we're like, thanks, mayor, that's totally right, that's exactly what we need, absolutely. So. We went out on, a we on, a roof, on, on the rooftop of, the public of, the, of this parking facility on a weekend without permission and painted this graphic that would become our public square. And, and we didn't know at the time that this would become the first and only major public square built in the United S States since many of them had been torn down in the 30s because we were using them to say we want more time with our families or that we want safer working conditions, things like that. So they became tennis courts and parking lots. What actually happened was it was almost as if a giant acupuncturist had come along and said, oh, we need to put some pressure right here. Because what happened actually um, changed the entire city and began to affect the region. At last, we had a place where time and space and life was apparently not for sale. The notion of a public living room arrived right at a, at a critical time in the city of Portland. The inner city had been dying. The political culture was corrupt. It was so typical of many other American cities of the time. Sprawl was proceeding, funded by the taxation that would otherwise, that should have been going to reinvesting in the inner city. What has happened since that time, just a few decades ago, is one of the most incredible stories of transformation that everyone in our country right now should know. 